Kubernetes case study. Deploy a Spring Boot app with PostgreSQL database. Want to try something real with Kubernetes? Let's deploy a Spring Boot application with a PostgreSQL database that needs persistent storage. This way, you will get hands-on experience managing stateful and stateless applications on Kubernetes. Here are the steps to achieve this using Kubernetes. Create a persistent volume and persistent volume claim for the PostgreSQL database. Set up a deployment to manage the PostgreSQL database and ensure persistence. Deploy the Spring Boot application using a deployment, which is a stateless application. Expose both PostgreSQL and the Spring Boot application using services. Access the PostgreSQL database and make sure everything is running smoothly. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the alert button. That way, when I release more videos and more tips like this, you will get notified. If you are excited to diving deeper into the world of Docker and Kubernetes and modern software engineering from architecture to cloud and security, check out my video courses where I explore these concepts further and tackle real-world challenges. The link to the courses is in the video description below. And here is a bonus. Subscribe to my newsletter and you will get free and discount access to my video courses. Prerequisites Before you begin, ensure you have the following setup. A running Kubernetes cluster. You can use Minikube, Kind, or any managed Kubernetes service like Google Kubernetes Engine, Elastic Kubernetes Service, etc. In my case, I'm using Minikube and Docker Desktop for a local Kubernetes deployment on my local machine. So after starting Docker Desktop, to make the Docker daemon available, I need to start Minikube by running the command Minikube start. You need also to have kubectl client installed and configured to communicate with your cluster. Helm is optional, but recommended for easier management. Create persistent volume, PV, and persistent volume claim, PVC, for PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL needs a persistent disk to store data. We will define a persistent volume and a persistent volume claim, PVC, that your database will use. Create a PostgreSQL storage YAML file with the following content. This creates a claim for one gigabyte of storage that the PostgreSQL will use. Let's apply the persistent volume and persistent volume claim by running kubectl apply minus f postgree minus storage dot yaml. So why do we need both PV and PVC? To achieve your goal of deploying a Spring Boot application on Kubernetes with a PostgreSQL database and persistent storage, you need both persistent volume PV and persistent volume claim PVC. Here is why each is necessary. Persistent volume, PV, represents a piece of storage in the cluster. It defines the actual storage resource, including its capacity, access modes, and the physical location, like host path, NFS, or cloud storage. Persistent volume claim, PVC, acts as a request for storage by a pod. A persistent volume claim binds to a suitable persistent volume that needs its requirements, capacity, access modes, etc. This allows the pod to abstract storage usage and lets Kubernetes manage the underlying details. Next step, step three, deploy the PostgreSQL database. Now let's create a deployment for PostgreSQL that will ensure the database has persistence across restarts and maintains an ordered consistent state. Create a PostGree deployment YAML file with the following content. Apply it by running kubectl apply minus f postgree minus deployment dot YAML. This deployment runs a PostGree pod that will store data in the persistent volume defined earlier. The PostGree container will have a password and a pre-created database called PostGree. Step 4. Create a service for PostgreSQL. 
Since other components, like the Spring Boot app, need to communicate with PostgreSQL, we'll expose it within the cluster using a Kubernetes service. Create a PostgreSQL service YAML file with the following content. As you can see, the PostgreSQL service is configured as a node port, and it's exposed on the Kubernetes node at 32,432. Inside the cluster, the service is accessible at the service name PostgreSQL on port 4432 due to Kubernetes built-in DNS. A cluster IP, the default service type, would work if the Spring Boot app is also deployed in the same cluster. But node port is needed for external communication. And that's what I need because I will establish a connection to the database from outside the Kubernetes cluster. More on that later. Let's apply the service. kubectl apply minus f postgre-service.yaml. Now the postgre SQL database is running and exposed within the cluster. Step 5. Create a Docker image for the Spring Boot app. I need to create a Docker file in the root of my Spring Boot project. Here is an example of a basic Docker file for a Spring Boot application. Before building the Docker image, I need to package my Spring Boot application into a jar file by running the appropriate command to generate the jar. In my case, I'm using Gradle as a build tool, so I just have to run the boot jar Gradle task. Now, I need to use the Docker environment within Minikube. Minikube provides a command to use the Docker daemon in Minikube so that you can directly build Docker images inside Minikube without pushing them to a remote registry like Docker Hub. Let's run eval $minikube docker-env. Then I can build the Docker image by running docker build minus t my image tag, which is spring minus boot minus app colon latest then dot. Remember, this Docker image will be created inside Minikube because I'm using the Docker environment within Minikube since I run a val Minikube Docker env. So don't be surprised when you don't see the image on the GUI of Docker Desktop. To verify the Docker image, run the following command to see if the image has been built successfully. Docker images. Step 6. Deploy the Spring Boot app. Next, we'll create a deployment for the Spring Boot app, which is stateless, meaning it can scale easily without needing persistent storage. Create an app deployment YAML file with the following content. Apply the deployment. kubectl apply minus f app minus deployment dot YAML. Step 7. Expose the Spring Boot app with a service. Now let's create a service to expose the Spring Boot app so that you can access it from outside the cluster. Create an app service YAML file with the following content. Apply the service kubectl apply minus f app minus service dot YAML. Step 8. Verify everything is running. You can check the status of your deployment, pods, and services with the following commands. kubectl get services. kubectl get deployments. kubectl get pods. If everything is running smoothly, you should see your PostGree and Spring Boot app deployment, pods, and both services in a healthy state. Step 9. Access the PostgreSQL SQL database. Once the PostgreSQL service is exposed via node port, you can use the Minikube URL to connect to the database. You can also use the services URL directly. To retrieve it, run the following command. Minikube service, then the service name, which is PostgreSQL in our case, minus minus URL. I'm using IntelliJ, so I will establish the connection to the database here in my editor.
Et voilà, the connection with my PostgreSQL database is established successfully. And that's it. Found that helpful? Smash that like button like it's a bug in your code. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech insights. Good questions or topic you would love to unravel? Drop a comment below. Until next time, keep the servers running and that coffee brewing. If you are excited about diving deeper into the world of Docker and Kubernetes, check my video courses where I explore these concepts further and tackle real-world challenges. The link to the courses is in the video description below. See you next time.